Alright, in today's video, let's take a look at the differences between the stock DT Swiss M212 suspension out of the DFXL and the newer elastomer that's sent from inner city bicycles in the Netherlands. Side by side, you can see that the newer one, I've requested it to be shorter. This one is 200 millimeters from eye to eye, center to center, and this one is 190 millimeters from center to center. The stock suspension does have a lockout lever, which I never use, so I taped it. It does have rebound adjusting, and for the compression, to adjust how far down you want, if you want a certain amount of sag, it does have an air cartridge for a Schrader valve right here. So there's three separate types of adjustments or things you can do. So lockout, compression, rebound dampening. The new shock has none of those. There are last numbers in here that were already installed when I purchased it from Inner City Bike. And it doesn't have any compression dampening or lockout. It just got built from them in house. It's a custom part. And I'll go ahead and measure this right here. The upper end right here comes out to about 29.3 millimeters across and I'll go ahead and check that end and compare it to the stock suspension here and that is 30.0 so very close they should both be compatible on the upper end of the suspension which is actually the lower part of the velomobile it actually fits almost like it's upside down that's 20 millimeters apart and the new suspension I figure that's top part is also 20 millimeters so that should work as well the stock suspension is 217 grams with the zip tie the new suspension comes in a little heavier 224 grams also note the stroke here there's at least three centimeters here and for the new suspension I'm gonna say there's only about 15 15 millimeters maybe a little more 15 to 20 millimeters whereas this one you have probably 30 to 40 usable at, at least so already right there is 43 maybe it bottoms out closer to 45 or 50 so you get a lot more travel with the stock suspension so the big question is should you replace your stock suspension with an elastomer and that depends if you want to get a larger cassette like i do then you're going to have to get a shorter suspension in order to gain more clearance between the cassette and the body for the rear derailleur to fit in. So I'll go ahead and install and let's see if it fits. Here's what the updated suspension or new suspension looks like inside the Velmobile now. And it is 190 millimeters, so it raises the rear wheel up by approximately, I guess, 10 millimeters. And also brings the shell as the wheel comes up the shell sits a little further down so you can see that there may be a little extra space to shift into the lower gear so right now I'm in second gear and I'll go ahead and switch it over to the first gear. so we're in second gear now I'm going to be switching over to first gear and there's still a little bit of clearance down there so if you look at the bottom here it could still move and rub just the tiniest bit but it could still listen there's no pressure on it right now it can move back and forth so that's good and that is when it's in first gear 42 tooth if you're looking for a little more clearance for your rear derailleur hanger uh, a shorter shock definitely is the way to go. The, from 200 millimeters down to 190 millimeter will make a big difference. I already destroyed one SRAM rear derailleur because just had the wrong combination of the rear derailleur and the gearing and I switched to another gear and then the shell hit the rear derailleur hanger and therefore destroyed it and I had a long walk home. If you did find this helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And as always, have a most wonderful day. Thanks for watching.